just have a little zippy. It's always a roofer, I think. It's the start of this young age, helping dad. You're the owner. Me and Tanya. How is it roofing in Canada? A day mare, perhaps. The price gotta be pretty high. The whole industry got disrupted. So I do all that. I'll do the all evaluate, send the quote in, and then I'll do the job too. Hey man, I'm a little high there, Josh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, 80% of their business. business. Yeah. The roofers are their own kind of people after a while, right? I've seen some really crazy ones. We do a lot of funny videos on roofs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You. I started from my basement as a contractor and eventually grew it to 18 states and 173 million in sales. Booyah, baby! Either the next guy's gonna win the deal or you're not gonna get the deal. The velocity of information through your company. We understand that like this is valuable stuff. I think the contractor should be talking directly to the carrier because they're doing the work. You don't brand yourself as being an expert and you create your own following. It's the nightmare of being a small business owner. You just happen to have found this amazing niche. the SVG Speakeasy with Josh Bigger, otherwise known as Best Damn Roofer. Best diddly darn roofer on Facebook. Yeah, you gotta they, watch. Don't, they don't let you write damn. It, well, goes, yeah. it always defaults to diddly darn. Well, I've had that trouble my whole career as a best damn roofer, just not accepted because of uh, my behavior. So you and your wife came all the way from Canada. What part? Just uh, Niagara Falls, Niagara area. Niagara Falls, okay. Right above Buffalo, New York. Nice. Let's put it into... So Josh is going to be at Wind of Storm again. He's going to play a quick song for us, a little little Wind of Storm song. And That's then we're right. Gonna, I wrote this we'll, for Anthony. Then we're going to do your interview. We want to hear more about you, your background, how you, how you think you're the best dang roofer in North America. I don't think oh, Anthony, I, I know. He is. So why don't you whip out the song and we'll play one at the end. Wind the storm. Wind the storm. Okay, here we go. You guys ready for this? If you got your own company, take a minute and listen to me. There's a place I know. It's the Storm Chasers trade show. It's when the storm sell, build, collect, earn million dollar profits. At Anthony's trade show. Big time! Boom! Calls for a drink, job, man. Calls for a drink. Did you just write that on a plane or what? <sighs> on, a, on the cuff, they call that. Hey, eh? you wrote that on the cuff. You deserve a, a Canadian beer. Here you go. Thank you, sir. We are on a speakeasy, so you can you can drink here. <sniffs> Roofers drink, don't they? Mm hmm. They drink. They do this. What, what was that? <laughs> oh my <Yeah>. gosh! <laughs> Sorry, I didn't know you were about to cheers me. I just had a little sippy. <laughs> I'm just having a sip. It's a little early for me, but... Was it 9.30 a.m., 10.30? <laughs> it's late. It's, it's getting like, It's almost noon. It's almost time for bed. You guys kept me up late, late last night, <laughs> yes. you and the Reeds. I'd like to say thank you for dinner. It was wonderful last night, by the way. So everybody wants to know how you got... What's your story? How'd you get into... How'd you become a musician? Became a roofer? What came first? Yada, yada, yada. I was always a roofer, I think. It started as a young age, helping dad or my uncles do family roofs around, uh, you know, and then it turned into a part-time thing. In the summer, working for family, friends, and whatnot, and uh, and then I did the music thing. That was we toured around. I was in a couple bit different bands, and that was kind of a lifestyle. And then I had a bunch of kids with this girl over here, unfortunately, and uh, she wrapped me up. I had no more fun for a while, and I was sitting around thinking, like, oh man, this is getting pretty boring. So we decided to tape my idiocracy and film it and spread it off to the world. And now we found you. Uh, was it last year through the through Paul? Paul Reed is a, was a fan of yours because yeah. you do a lot of videos that's right correct you do a lot of funny videos on roofs uh, yeah i've seen some really some really crazy ones and that's yeah the snowflakes <laughs> snowflakes okay and flake yeah it's vegan 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 drugs right it'll be calorie free <laughs> calorie free so paul's like you gotta check this guy out maybe we can get him at the winter store <laughs> conference and uh i'm like okay so i watched a couple of your videos we got you out there you came last year for the first time correct played for the uh, industry award night yeah i did believe i won an award and won an award one of the best marketing videos, I believe. Best marketing video, did a yeah. job in that. So when you're shooting videos, we shoot a lot of videos, obviously, also. Training videos. Yeah. Yours are kind of fun entertainment videos. They're like the opposite of training. We had to come like, up, and shoot. To we had to yeah. come up <laughs> and shoot with you. <laughs> yeah. How do you do it the Canadian way on the roofs? So yeah. how is it How is it roofing in Canada? Is, it, is there a lot of codes? Is it different than the U.S.? Depends where you are. Like It's just like the States, right? There's provinces, but each province has different codes and whatnot. But got to follow the same similar rules, right? Safety rules are all there. They're, is it all white guys doing the roofs? 
Um, you don't have like a large subcontract labor force. Like no, we don't. We don't have like. Uh, I know that they they bring in a lot of uh, Mexican crews coming. I didn't mean to bring. Right? Ra- I didn't mean to bring no. race into it. I was being real. No, yeah, no. Down, but, down here, most I'd say eighty percent of the roofing's done by. Uh, you know, South Americans, Mexicans. Yeah. You know, no, here, yeah, the can- country in Canada, it's mostly guys like me, long haired, bearded, loud mouth roofers, right? Because because when I went to Australia, it was the same way. You know, it's ninety. It's, Australia is ninety eight point five percent white. Yeah. And one point five percent Aboriginal. Well, the roofers are actually their own kind of race. Like I know people are like I'm, I'm actually a roofer. I'm not white anymore. It's just my you know, my own shade, right? It's usually pretty dark from the sun. So a roofer is their own kind of people. After a while, right? Now, do so, they have unions up there? Is it? Uh, there is unions. Yeah, they're more for the big cities like Toronto. And I'm like, assuming the price got to be pretty high. You know, it's a social. It's basically a little, little more teetered towards socialism in Canada, right? So they got they must have higher, higher wages, higher. Demand. Higher wages. Are, we just had a wage increase this year that pushed all the rates up, right? And uh, what is the minimum wage in Canada? Fifteen dollars an hour now. I believe it's fourteen. Tanya, it's like fourteen thirty. Fourteen change. See, in Australia, it's twenty five. The people working in Australia that flip your burgers are making twenty five bucks an hour minimum wage. I'm moving to Australia then, man. That's hardcore. Uh, social That's a perfect job for me. <laughs> <laughs> so they don't have a lot of poor people there. They have just a lot of middle class. Yeah. and a lot of rich people either. It's kind of a huge bit of middle class. So I was always curious. I've been. No. I, I went to Canada a few times, and uh, when I worked at Equalab, I was I traveled and trained sales reps. Yeah. Through North America, so I had you know I always thought Canada was all grizzly bears, you know woods. You just went up to go hunting, and I hit I hit. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Montreal, Halifax area, Vancouver, Edmonton. And Beautiful country. What's that, what's that city you're near? Toronto? Toronto, Toronto. right near Toronto. So these are huge, these are huge yeah. cosmopolitan yeah. cities. Oh, yeah. I mean, wasn't Montreal? Like Just like, Paris. yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. So he's French, went up to Halifax, now they're starting to speak. Beautiful like, country. Uh, English, more of an English accent, right? Or Where Irish. Up in Halifax or Newfoundland? Well, it's more like a, called a Newfie, Newfie right? Newfie. Hey there, right? They talk like that, right? Eh? It's like Irish, right? It came from the Irish. That's the accent is from. Ireland. A lot of pretty women up there. Yeah. I married one. Yeah, a lot of pretty women up there. Vancouver, uh, huge city. So, yeah, Canada is a huge... Uh, it's a lot different than what I thought. Edmonton has the largest mall in the world. It did, I believe. They got conquered by Japan. Yeah. Oh, Japan too. Japan, yeah, eventually. Mall of America, Minnesota, that's where I'm from. That, was the, yeah. that used to be the second largest. Yeah, the Arizona has a pretty big one I went to. Today or yesterday was there. It's pretty amazing. Model. So how so how long? So what's the name of your company then? Bigger Roofing. Bigger Roofing. Like my last name. Yeah. Bigger Roofing. So you're the, you're the owner. I'll owner. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Me and Tanya. I got to split half with her. Does she work with you? Oh, kind of. Works against me half the time. It feels, eh, babe? <laughs> <laughs> she ever get on a roof? She's been on a few roofs. Uh, uh, yeah, she's been out there before. Cut and helped me out and uh, done a few things. How many guys you got working for you there? Uh, it depends on a good day, right? We had a sub crew come in, so they just work one or two days a week doing a couple jobs for me, and then I had a small, smaller crew this year. Do you have right. an office, office manager, or anything like that? Tanya does all the office stuff. It's at in-home office. We're currently going to be... Sweet. Yeah, so we're just... No overhead. I like that. And we got five kids at home, so we're just like living in this like... Hell. hell hole. Yeah, thanks, Tanya. <laughs> <laughs> living hell. A daymare, perhaps. <laughs> So a lot of guys, you know, at Winter Storm, a lot of the guys uh, and gals watching this right now were operate. Most of them operate somewhat in uh, more on the insurance restoration side yeah. and retail. Yeah. Um, tell me a little about the insurance restoration process. And Ken, I already know a little bit about it, but tell me how it works here. It's a little bit different than you guys have. Like for instance, we do for uh, work for a restoration company, and there will be only three restoration companies in our area, and they'll get like. The influx of all the calls come in for the big storm, right? So they get all the calls. You get hailstorms up there. We get mostly windstorms that cause because we have the uh, asphalt shingles. So a windstorm will, will cause. You get floods. Seen some yeah. floods, some fires. But I have seen a couple hailstorms that hit. Uh, Few, yeah. yeah. They're usually isolated, very isolated to small areas. Like right. it'll hit like a couple acres. Right, comes down. It's not like here in, our, in Colorado where it's a everyday thing. All right, every. And you have more of a preferred contractor network. So if somebody calls in a claim, usually it's a contractor showing up to do the adjustment, correct? It would be like for for, free. I get called out to do that. Like I have an agreement with the To evaluate the property? Yep. So I do all that. I'll do all evaluated, send the quote in, and then I'll do the job too. So we take care of everything. So you're you're writing your own bill. Now, do they, do, they, do, they ever, do, they, do they ever adjust it? Do they say, hey, man. On certain things, a lot of times they're 700 adjusting. 700 square is a little high there, Josh. Yeah, yeah, but it depends what they need, too, right? Like, so if they had an emergency call, you had to come out right away, you had a tarp bit, right? And then uh, depends all it's about, resheet it. What's, so you're, what's not an, you're not meeting an actual adjuster, independent adjuster. You're just going you, to that, We kind of become the adjuster, and they have an adjuster, too, but, like, they send us out as, like, to do their job. The eyes and ears, then they have to have a desk adjuster. Yeah, exactly, because they're so busy with these storms we had that they just 
you, they put that job on me. Right. Right. So you go, there's your size of the roof, there's the damage, here's the photos, here's what we think. And then they take that and take it back to insurance and see what they can get, obviously adding some more profit to that. Nice. Now, so. have you ever gone to one of these where the homeowner has said, look, I have my favorite roofing contractor, I yeah. guess? And, and what do you do? Do you get paid for to do the inspection? The inspection, or? and then you, because they have a doubt, they have uh, their deposit, right, that they right. pay after they put their claim in. Called deductible? Deductible, yeah, yeah. Sorry, deductible. What do you call uh, it up there? Deductible. Okay, and I'll yeah. show you this. The bank was just getting to the brain there. I was <laughs> mulling up some words there. <laughs> but um, we kept you out late last night. So. Yeah, that's true. I ate a lot of steak, so I got the meat sweats happening today. Oh. <laughs> but yeah, they take the deductible, and then if they want to go with their preferred contractor, but usually you're there. You you get to meet them the first time. They get to know you, and if I'm so local, you usually get the job. Usually get the job. But if they have someone, it's a family member. Yeah, it's no hard feelings. I just get my money for the repair. They get the check for their repair and then it's usually in the roofing company's name so mm -hmm. if they got they hire me to do it they'll get a check that says bigger roofing comes to the mail for the so mail. it comes right to you yeah, it comes to the, the, the and goes i'm to moving them. to canada paul and then and then we get <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah or the uh, and with your restoration company they'll uh, send you a check at the end so if you're working directly for insurance you get to work with the client or the homeowner and then check it you get the right, check, yeah uh, they name and then the check. restoration company they'll hold it for their 30 days to 90 days right. whatever your contract is you now it's very it similar to australia i went to yeah. i don't know if you know this but in 2013 when i was trying to decide what i really want to do with my life i chased one last storm i went to brisbane australia brought 10 15 guys out there set up on a set i did a joint venture a real joint venture you know with a uh, 44 million dollar company out there that had offices up and down the coast yeah and we went out and met, did, you know, learned the Australian process yeah. of selling. They'd never seen, they'd never heard of somebody knocking a door. It didn't exist. Didn't exist, no. A 1099 sales rep doesn't exist in a socialist country. Everybody's a W-2 employee. Yeah. And this whole process of what we do in America just doesn't exist there. And the same thing there. They bring out a preferred contractor. So we did a tie-in with this company, brought, you know, 15 Americans out there. And all of a sudden, we're out there doing this. Sign and service agreements and contingency agreements. Yeah. <laughs> and this company, this this big company, started getting calls from from VPs and insurance carriers that they that they'd done business with because they're also yeah. a preferred contractor. That's how it works there. And they're like, "Who the hell are, are these, these Americans guys? out here? And what the hell's going on?" Like the whole industry got disrupted. We can do that in Canada. So it lasted about two months. And we yeah. had home. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> better than we, we, got little, we got a little nervous. They're, yeah. they're about to lose about you know eighty percent of their business. business. Yeah this new business model but it but it was a really good experience and that market i believe is wide open yeah for someone to go bring the u.s uh storm restoration model into but you have to stay there you yeah know, we were there for two three months so well, but you, Can it's an experience canada's a little smaller in population i think there's 300 million in america and there's only 29 million in canada total like there's more people in the state of california than there's the entire country of canada oh, wow so i know that yeah, like knocking on doors. Sometimes you got to like go for a walk, right? <laughs> Saskatchewan's long, right? <laughs> did you ever play? Did you ever get in a recorded album on, a, on the music side? Yeah, we were down in Hollywood. We recorded with um, a producer called Scott Hackwith. He did some popular albums with the uh, Ramones. He did the Acid Eater album and a few other older punk bands. He recorded with. So we recorded with him in Hollywood. We were on the Warp Tour for a few years. We were on the same label as Good Charlotte. It's got to be like the life of a storm chaser when you're when you're, doing when you're 21. <laughs> it was like no, it was like you were just living in a storm. It was crazy, right? Like oh, so, a lot of late nights. Yeah, I was dating Tanya at the time. We broke up for 10 years in between, but she was dating. She was my girlfriend. She was 18, and I was 21. That's probably, that's probably not too good for a relationship on the road. We had a 10 year separation. <laughs> we worked things out. We had a couple kids with some other people, yeah, and then uh, <laughs> here we are. Well, good. Thanks for coming on the speakeasy. Appreciate it. I know we got the reeds coming up next. We're going to talk about them. Why don't you? Uh, what's a favorite song everyone likes? Roofing is fun. Roofing I think is that's fun. A pretty popular one. Why don't we close out a little? Roofing is fun, and uh, we'll see you on the other side. I gotta say thank you uh, to Marky Wahlberg for lending me this uh, antique guitar. Paul, so that's you. <laughs> <laughs> Roofing is fun. Na 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 na. Roofing is fun. Na 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 na, roofing's fun. Na 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 na, roofing's fun. Can't wait until summer is here. I'm counting down the days. I'm staring at my window. I'm dreaming of better days. In the hot sun. We're roofing on and on in the hot sun. We're roofing on and on in the hot, hot sun. Each day's 
getting longer This feels like it's taking forever I think I'm going crazy There's only one thing that can save me In the hot sun We're roofing on and on In the hot sun We're roofing on and on In the hot, hot sun Roofing is fun Na, 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 na Roofing is fun Na, 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 na Roofing in the hot, hot sun Woo! Yeah, yeah, good job! Woo, yeah, baby!